So about a month ago, I installed the EG418K in my workshop, and now I'm finally doing an update review. A lot of people have been asking about this, and they wanna see if I've had any issues. So first, let's go over the numbers. On the app, I've done over a megawatt hour for solar, I've done over a megawatt hour for battery discharge, and I've done over a megawatt hour for feed in energy, or how much I'm exporting to the grid. The only thing that hasn't had a megawatt hour is the consumption from the AC output, and that's at 800 kilowatt hours. And so far, everything's worked perfectly. I've done multiple firmware updates, I've changed the settings multiple times, I've been changing the time of use settings, I haven't had a single hiccup, and I haven't had a single error code. Also, I've been checking the app every 30 minutes to an hour because it's fun to see what my system is doing. But yeah, not a single complaint with the app at all. And this is my favorite app. It shows everything. They also color coded it with the recent update and it looks fantastic. Now when solar equipment actually does its job and works, my videos become very boring and it's harder for me to make recommendations because then I'm scouring the forums to see if anyone's having issues with this unit. And so far, no one's complained about it. The only complaints I've had is people calling me a shill for this company. Are you freaking kidding me? I've bashed on EG4 more than any other YouTuber or internet forum poster or whatever. So it was really funny. A lot of people that own Solarx or work for Solarx seem to not like it when I talk about this unit. They think that this is a copy of them. But guess what? This unit, the Solarx, and all the other ones are made in China. So I don't feel bad. I don't care about these distributors. I care about the product and if it actually works, especially with these larger all-in-ones, if the software works, because I've showed you all the issues that we've had recently. Anyways, let's move on. I haven't seen any complaints on the forum and I'm waiting for it. I've been scouring it and trying to see if anyone has any issues with this unit. Next, Current Connected is gonna be distributing these as well and Dexter has one. Typically, if I don't find a problem, he does and I haven't heard him make a complaint yet. Also, a tech at a distributor who works with these all day long says that he likes this one better than the Solark. He says that the interface is by far better. So I don't have experience with the Solark, I just know how well it works and where you can install it. But yeah, this one a lot of people are seeming to like. We do have one forum member running his entire house off of it, and he hasn't really posted any updates, but he said everything's working fine. And they've sold a lot of these, so I was expecting somebody to complain about it by now. But so far, pretty much crickets. Now let me tell you about some things that I think that they need to improve, because I think I can always find something that they can improve. So first off, the input voltage for solar, I wish it was a little bit higher because two of my strings that are on this Victron MPPT over here do not work with this unit because the voltage is too low. Also, I wish the MPPT had like four or five trackers. That would be incredible. And I would spend extra money to have that capability, especially for off-grid systems with multiple arrays. Next, the Wi-Fi dongle, you have to reconnect it manually when the internet's been down. So my internet at the house was down for a whole day and then it wouldn't reconnect. So I had to log out of the app, connect it to Wi-Fi manually, and then everything worked again. And that day I actually had to reconnect some ring cameras, so I'm not sure what happened, but yeah, I had to reconnect a lot of my devices and this was one of them. Oh, I do have a complaint. So the input wattage for peak shaving needs to be set manually. We did not have it set before and I had 19,500 watts going into the unit from the grid. And the conductor size that I have supplying that AC input is not large enough to handle that current. And I did not know that. So if you have the settings and you're running a lot of loads and you're also charging a lot from the grid at maximum rate, you have to keep that setting in mind. I think that's all the complaints that I have. I can't find anything else. So in my last video though, I made a recommendation that you should buy an LV6548 if you have a strictly off-grid system. And I'm still standing by that and it's like half the cost of this. But this is really nice and it's cheaper than a Solark. So if you have this side by side with some LV6548s, I think most of you would actually prefer this. Even if you do not have the grid and you don't want to use the grid interactive features, this thing is a beast. Um, if you want to run large loads, this thing is fantastic. Just the quality and software alone in the monitoring and data logging is on a completely different level than the LV6548. I know you guys do not want to spend more money on software, but if you get used to using this, 
and then you go back to an LV6548, you're going to know what I'm talking about. This is on a completely different level. This is like commercial equipment versus like a consumer Chinese electronic device. There is a massive difference in the quality and everything else on this unit. Actually, one thing I could complain about is the fan noise when you have max export to grid and you have solar coming in and you're pushing this thing to the limit for like five or six hours. And I do that every single day with this unit. That's why I was able to ramp up a megawatt hour in less than a month. Now I must mention though that the LV6548 is a lot louder, even if there are no loads attached to that thing. If you have the MPPT at 50% capacity, capacity, it's still like twice as loud as this thing. That thing is ridiculous. Also, EG4 posted a video running dryers, running an air compressor, running heaters, all sorts of other stuff. And other people are running their whole house off of this. I'm going to build a new workshop up the street from my house, and then I'll be able to do larger load tests because this workshop is at maximum capacity. I cannot fit anything else in here and it's kind of stressing me out. So we're going to do those tests in the future but how it's connected right now, I haven't had any issues. And I've tested every feature on this thing. So, so far, no complaints. Now to end this video, I'm still mad about being called a shill. When people say that to me, when I complain about everything and I've bashed on these products more than anyone else, it makes me very angry. I do not know what you guys are talking about. It shows that you guys are biased towards Solark. I like Solark. I have no problem with any of these companies. I don't even care who the company is or who works for them. I just test the device. That's all I care about. I'm here to find every problem with this device and that's my job. And when you think that I'm a shill for doing that over and over hundreds of times, it drives me bananas. So anyways, that, well, that was not nice of you guys. And seriously, if you have a complaint about this, share it with the world. Post it on the forum, post it on YouTube, find something to complain about because we are all desperate to find the faults of this unit. So help us out and instead of being a keyboard warrior, go on and make some videos with me. Like help me out, find more faults. We can make these products better and we can push the world forward. Complaining about something that you've never bought, complaining about me even though I'm bashing on everyone, it's, it's not helping anybody. So please help me out, find something wrong with this thing, you'll be doing me a huge favor. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video, bye.